And with that, I'd like to welcome Robert Ote back to the Exploration of Consciousness. Hello, Robert. Hey, Matt. How you doing? I'm great. Well, firstly, I hope that everyone listening has familiarized themselves with the terms in the beginning of this video series. Dr. Russell used many of these words in ways that current dictionaries do not have adequate definitions to describe. The language of light needs many different terms, new and improved terms, in order to describe the wave, which will help you better understand this presentation. Well, let's not prolong the inevitable. We have a lot to cover. To start, we will bring up the first picture of the show, which conveys the complete nature of the Creator, the Alpha and the Omega. This picture conveys the secret of creation, the beginning and the end. This is the still, undivided white light of the universal God mind. The next picture shows the reality of cause. The eternal omnipresent vacuum zero, the one magnetic light of mind, which man refers to as space. This is the real universe of knowing mind at rest, which is dark to our senses. This was the doctor's interpretation of what God is. Notice it is dark to our senses, but it conveys the still magnetic light of mind, which becomes desire, then unfolds into form and substance. Russell referred to mind knowing as being not of the physical universe, which this picture conveys beautifully in its simplicity. Yeah, Matt, and uh, what we're seeing is the stillness of eternity. What, what we notice is our physical universe, our disturbances in that stillness. This brings us to our next figure, entitled The Illusion of Effect. It conveys the transient, electrically compressed universe of the two electric lights of body, the unreal motion picture universe of thinking mind in action. The white light of stillness is expressed in the rapidly pulsing light of white incandescent suns and galaxies which populate the infinity of space. As Daniel stated earlier, electricity is the force used by mind to manifest thinking in this 3D world. The result is a very convincing illusion of matter and form. This is the very definition of Maya given by the ancient sages who derive their knowledge from mind knowing, not from experiments, equations, and formulas used in academic science, which is their definition of knowledge. And speaking of Maya, this is where much of science loses touch with the sages and that they are only using their senses to try to explain the effects of motion, which are infinitely complex, all the while failing to comprehend the stillness of mind knowing. The stillness of eternity is the reality of the universe. All motions are a disturbance of and a return to the stillness. This leads to all kinds of false academic theories and sense-based observations and their conclusions that only further complicate the simplicity of the wisdom of the sages. As Russell said, the senses cannot know anything. They are but recorders of the effects of motion in this cosmic cinema of illusion. Exactly, Matt. These theories based on sensory perceptions and empirical observations of academic science are not knowledge. They are guesses. Memorizing these theories is not knowledge. It is memorizing an academic agenda whose reward is an academic degree and its social status. Quick question. Can you give us an example of knowing versus sensing? Knowing would be your understanding that you are eternal and that you can't die. Sensing would be the false belief that you die because your body dies. Your body is your sensory-based perception of the universe, and when it goes, you believe you go, but you are eternal. Well, let's talk about the force that creates the illusion of substance and matter. Electricity is the only force in the universe, Matt. Magnetism and gravity manifest to our senses as the result of electricity performing its duty. Magnetism is an elastic reaction to the motions of electricity, which is its cause. Gravity is not a separate force. It only manifests in matter because all motion seeks rest from the imbalance caused by the movements of electricity, which interrupt the normal stillness of the universe. As figure 61 shows, the life principle series of the universal heartbeat, 
This is the cathode and the anode. The life and death cycle, as shown by the compression cathode and expansion anode, rings enclosed in cubes of gravity control. Gravity is absolute stillness, not a force. A wave or a graviton particle is theorized by academic scientists. Electricity thrusts from centers of stillness to wave field boundaries of the cubes, which they center. There are these expanding motions are recorded in the inert gases, then they are voided on the plane of zero curvature and stillness, and radar back with thrusting electricity of compression to the centers of stillness from which they came. The pulsing, thrusting electricity produces the illusion that it creates gravity in both its expansive and contracting conditions. That is, gravity which is the stillness of the cube centers and the stillness of the six cubic wave field boundaries. Gravity is not a pulling force. Its so-called attractive force is an illusion according to the senses of mankind, which led to Newton to define it as an attractive force, which it is not. The thrusting force of electricity is the sole worker in the universe. It thrusts inward to create compression at wave field centers, which man observes as implosion. It thrusts outward to create compression at wave field boundaries, which mankind senses as the process of expansion. They are both in reality the same spiraling motion because they are both pushing, not pulling. One is spiraling inward and the other is spiraling outward. The so-called attraction of gravity and magnetism are illusionary forces created by these electrical motions. What man perceives as an attractive force is actually masses of light potential seeking rest in each other in the stillness of their centering fulcrums. Exactly, Robert. And as Dr. Russell was quoted from a letter to the editor of the New York Times in the year 1930, Newton, for example, would have solved the other half of the gravitational problem if he had found out how that apple and the tree upon which it grew got up in the air before the apple fell. I challenge the world of science to correctly and completely answer that question, he wrote.